Hello and welcome back to my channel, Welsh Reviews. I'm Gareth and today I'll be doing my review for episode 15 of Horror Friday, uh, The Late Night with the Devil. So this is a new horror film that's just come out. It is. It's directed by Cameron uh, Carnes and Colin Carnes. If I uh, pronounce them last names, I apologise. I do. They are both, I think, Australian filmmakers. It is, and I could be wrong with that. I could, but they have done a couple of horrors in the past. Not a lot. Uh, Scare Campaign and 100 Bloody Acres. So after watching this, I will be trying going back and having a look at them once. It is. It also stars David, and I'm hoping I pronounced this last name right, uh, De Small Chin. I think that's how we do pronounce it. You've seen them in loads of bit parts in in loads of movies from Blade Runner 2049, the Ant-Man movies, Dune, the latest Dune, loads of that. This is his first, if I'm not mistaken, leading role in a movie, which I'm full on excited for when I heard that because he is a phenomenal actor and he's brilliant in everything he does. It also stars Laura, uh, Laura Gordon, Ian Bliss, uh, uh, Faisal. Bazai, uh, if I butcher the name, I'm part my apologies. Ingrid Torelli and Reese uh, Ot. Oh, I'm butchering these names today. Ot Ottery, if I butcher that as well, I apologize. I do. So, a little bit about the plot is Jack Delroy, a late night talk, talk show host, um, tries to get his ratings up uh, on his late night talk show, Night Dows. He competes with, um, oh, what's his name, Johnny Carson's uh, talk show hall thing from the 70s. Uh, so it's like by hosting mediums, a possessed girl and an ex-magician who debunks similar acts. But as each guest comes on, more supernatural occurrences start to happen. So yeah, this is a 70s, this is, takes place in the 70s. Where the height of, they show in the beginning little clips of, they used to put anything on TV, you know, from the Vietnam War, clips from that, protests, etc. Loads of violence and that. Then it, it, we do have a little bit of a background of Jack Delroy, who was a talk show, um, a radio host, gave him this. And he does rise up, he gets like a lot of nominations and that. But in his, I think like eight years, they say, he only gets that nomination and he's never on par with Johnny Car uh, Carson. But unfortunately, when his wife passes away of lung cancer, even though she doesn't smoke, but that does come at later on in the movie towards the end if you find out pretty much why. Not going to get any spoilers from me from this uh, movie. Uh, we're not because I, I, if you're going to see it, go in it blind. It's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. So what was I saying? Yeah, his wife and that. Uh, he comes back with this show he does so yeah he's trying to get his ratings back up so he thought let's do a supernatural one for Halloween so you do get a few guests on there like I said at uh, Faisal Bazi plays uh, Christo who is like a medium who one of them ones who can like if you've got a tragedy in your family, you know the ones that say a name out and say, oh yeah, that's me, that type of one and all that. So he does, you get a guy thing for that, but he gets a very bad experience at the end of it. It is, and he kind of falls ill during the show. It is. We also have Ian Bliss, who's Carmichael Haig. He's the ex-magician, showman and all that, like slight the hand guy. It is, who debunks these uh, people and all and he always has a check on him for one thousand dollars or something like or is it a hundred thousand or something like that but he does a bit of five hundred thousand uh, dollars if they can prove to him what happens and the other guests you get then is um laura goodman who's a doctor who plays june ross mitchell and a little girl and a young girl called uh lily uh de Abo. Uh, that's played by Ingrid uh, Torelli. She was in a cult who'd done sacrifices and stuff like that. And supposedly she has a demon inside her. So pretty much to try and get the ratings and this thing. 
uh, Jack wants to communicate with the demon. So you have a little section of that during the movie as well. And then right after that, then we get a you know, from the, that onwards. The third act is absolutely outstanding for this um, uh, for this movie. You also have um, Reese at her uh, guest McConnell. He's the sh talk show's side um, sidekick during the movie. Who every time something happens or occurrence, he's he's saying they shouldn't be doing what they're doing. He is like the angel or the not the angel on his shoulder, something like that, just to prove like just to try and get jack to come back and uh and not do what they're doing and he says meddling with things that we don't understand and that and being a religious guy as he is i think in the movie he doesn't like where what's happening um this movie is absolutely brilliant in my opinion it's it, it plays out as talk show the whole movie does. It has the same aspect ratio, the small screens you get back then on the screen until you get the... When they go to commercial, you get a couple of behind-the-scenes things and it goes to black and white, the screen expands and then you get a bit of other dialogue of people talking behind the scenes, etc. But pretty much when they're like on TV, it is played like a proper episode of a talk show. Uh, uh, of a talk show. It has the brilliant music. I think David uh, Desmorchin is absolutely phenomenal in this. He plays the talk show horse down to a T perfect. His mannerisms, the way he, he talks to people and that is absolutely brilliant. I think all the actors in this do an absolute brilliant job. They do, which I do love. There is a part of the movie as well where you learn that he, he there's rumours that he's part of a club where it's men only but for the powerful and rich and they do occult stuff and, and things like that and that has a little bit of a play in the third act as well so but yeah the story of this you know it's a simple story when you look at it all but it's absolutely brilliant and it's not an exorcism but when they bring out the demon in the in lily the little the young girl it is from there onwards it, it's absolutely top tier horror in my opinion not saying the first half of the movie's not good that's a beautiful little little build up to where we're getting in this movie and yeah in the last i wouldn't say the last third act but the last 10 15 min, 20 minutes of the movie absolutely does go a bit batshit crazy as well which i i do absolutely love so we'll go into a couple of my positives, which I, I got pretty much all this movies are positive. I only have one negative, really. But like I said, great acting all round. I, I think David the, the small chin is like the main one. But Ingrid uh, Terrell, who plays the young girl, Lily, does an amazing job her, of, of being possessed. And the way her mannerisms are during her stint on the screen. It is, but everyone else plays their part to an absolute T, absolutely perfection. Great directing, good angles on the camera. Like I said, it's like a proper talk show, uh, really, the movie is, and it's absolutely brilliant. Um, not so many effects, but what they use, I like because they, f they look cheap. Not saying they are cheap, but I think they look cheap to keep it kind of kind of like a 70s movie to be honest with some of the effects that's in my opinion anyway it is but i think it works perfectly for this for this uh, movie the music as well they have some of the music is pretty much what you would hear on a talk show you know you have the live band in it and that but yeah i love the music for this and like i said a simple story but such an effective story as well it is um like I said, my only negative for this movie is it's not a lot of scares in it, to be honest. It's not a lot of jump scares or anything like that. I don't think there is a jump scare, to be honest. It ain't, but I wish it it, it, it had a little bit of uh, uh, some some scares in it just to amp it up a little bit. But that's my, pretty much my only negative. The only other thing, I think, if, if you're British... Um, Ghost Watch just came out on Blu-ray from 101 Films, if I'm not mistaken. I think that's a late 80s, early 90s, I think, similar to this, where 
you just make a TV show go into a house like a possessed child or something like that it is so this is kind of in that vein as well but like i said absolutely brilliant film definitely recommend seeing in the cinema if you can not a lot of show wins unfortunately around for this so if you want to wait it does come out on shutter i think in three to four weeks time because this is a shutter uh, production and it made the whole audience like because I was in a small cinema, but it was pretty much half full, so I was surprised by that, by how many actually came to see it. But there was a br- the funniest part of this was the beginning of the movie where because it's an independent movie, you have loads of companies putting money in. So it before the movie started, they rounded off. It, it had to be at least ten. In the beginning, it was one after the one after the other. It's pretty much if you've seen the episode of Family Guy where they talk, they they do a skit like that in Family Guy. It's exactly like that. It's just one after the other after. You just started laughing inside in the cinema. We all did. It is, but like I said, absolutely amazing movie. Can't wait to see us again. It is. I, I'd be tempted to go back to the cinema if there's any more showings. It is, but definitely, definitely need to see this again. And a definite buy. Hopefully, it comes out on physical media, and it's a definite buy for me. I give it a solid nine out of ten. If it had more scares in it, I would probably give it a nine point five, close to a ten. To be honest, I loved it that much, and it is definitely up there as my favorite. Be honest, my favorite horror of the year. It's probably my favorite movie of the year so far as well. And I can't see a lot of horrors beating this one out this year. So that's my review for Late Night Thing. Come back next Friday because on Tuesday I'm going to be watching another movie, horror movie, Immaculate. So that's the Sydney Sweeney, I think that's her name, uh, new horror movie. It is. It came out this week, but I'm going to go watch Ghostbusters on Saturday. So my review of that will be out on Sunday. So yeah, Immaculate. So next Friday, then episode 16 of Horror Friday, come back and we will do. I'll be doing my review for that. If you like this video, Give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment below. And tell me if you went to go and see it. I know it's a bit of a niche movie. Not a lot of uh, showings out there. But if you did go and see it. Tell me down below. And tell me what you thought of it. And if you'd like to see more videos I guess, Please subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you next time. Bye.